Hello, welcome back to the channel. This video follows my other video on the Australian workplace culture, but today we'll be talking about not so much workplace behavior, but more about what it is like to work here in Australia in terms of work hours, salaries, what benefits do you usually get as an employee in Australia. So if you're interested, keep watching. Okay, let's start with the basics. If you're working full-time here in Australia, the expected work hours are from 9am to 5pm. But of course, this depends on the industry because if you work at a bakery, you're probably going to be expected to be at the shop at around 4am or 5am. But for general office jobs, 9 to 5 is the usual. And this is around 38 hours per week. If you work less than 38 hours, you are working part-time. Okay, what about breaks? Lunch breaks usually are between 30 minutes and one hour. This depends on your contract. And of course, if you need a break to go to the toilet or to have a coffee, that's totally fine as well, knowing it's going to micromanage you because of that. Now, I know that there are some countries where staying after work hours or working extra hours, it's seen as working hard, but not in Australia. Here, it's not really a big deal whether you stay after work or not. As long as you are delivering results and performing well, no one really will have a problem. Work flexibility. Australian employers have become much, much more flexible during recent years, especially during the pandemic. And you'll see that many companies offer flexible work hours for their employees. What does this mean? Well, if you are not a morning person or if you have other responsibilities, such as having to pick up your kids from school, you can negotiate with your employer to have different work hours. So instead of getting in the office at 9 a.m., you may get in the office at 10 a.m. and leave at 6 instead of five. This is something that's becoming more and more common in Australian workplaces. Remote working or working from home has also become very popular since the pandemic and now if you get an office job here in Australia it's very likely that you'll have to work in hybrid mode. This means a few days in the office and a few days at home. In Australia both full-time and part-time employees have four weeks of annual leave per year. That is four weeks of holidays per year. Many people ask me, is taking holidays in Australia seen as bad or are you considered a lazy person if you want to take holidays? Not in Australia. Here people really value work-life balance and looking after your mental health and that's why employers encourage you to take holidays. And sometimes you don't even have an option. I'll give you an example. Most office-based workplaces usually shut down for two weeks in December during the holidays period for employees to spend time with their family, to travel and to, to take some days off. The only thing to consider is that if you're planning to take holidays, give enough notice to your boss so they can organize your work and be prepared. That's all. And apart from annual leave, if you're an employee here in Australia, you can access a different range of paid leave. For example, you can get up to 10 days of paid sick leave. If you just had a baby and you've been working with your employer for 12 months, you can take paid parental leave for up to 18 weeks. And there are so many other types of leave. So I leave you the link down below to the Fair Work site where you have a list with all your different entitlements, work rights, and all the different types of leave that you can access when you are an employee here. And apart from flexible work and paid leave, you can access other employee benefits such as paid education. For example, if you're studying a course or a certificate that's relevant to your role, many employers are willing to pay for that education for professional development purposes. And that's something that I find that it's really, really good. You can also get discounts for public transport or gym memberships. You may also be able to access something that's called Novated Lease, which means that you can buy a car through your company and get tax benefits. And there's so many other benefits benefits depending on the company that you work for but these are the most common ones. Okay another thing that you should know about Australia is that they have lots of public holidays but not all of them are national. Many of these public holidays are different in each Australian state. For example here in Melbourne we have the Melbourne Cup and on that day we have a public holiday but none of the other Australian states have this public holiday and this is the case all across the country. Again if you want to check all the different public holidays in each state the Fair Work site has everything you need to know. 
A question that I often get asked is what's the minimum wage in Australia? According to the Fair Work site, the minimum wage in Australia is $20.33 or $772.50 per week, but this is reviewed every year. And of course, there's a minimum wage for the specific industry you're in and Fair Work has a lot of information about that if you're interested. And this leads me to another question that I often get asked. What's the average salary in Australia? According to ABS data, if you consider both full-time and part-time employees, the median salary is around 62,000 Australian dollars per year. Another question that people ask is, can you negotiate your salary when you get a job? Yes, of course you can, but this is as long as you are able to demonstrate that you can bring the necessary skills and experience to really, really add value to this job. And of course, never negotiate your salary before getting an employment offer. Once you get your offer, and if you're not happy with the salary, that's your time to negotiate. If you want to know a bit more about weekly earnings and weekly salaries for your specific industry or job, I recommend this government site called joboutlook.com.au. I'll leave you the link down below. Salaries here in Australia are usually paid on a fortnightly basis or a monthly basis. It depends on the employer and the company. And of course, once your employer transfer your salary, you will get a payslip, which contains all the information that you need to know about your salary, hours worked, tax deductions for that specific period. And if you want to know a bit more about how much Australians pay on tax according to their salary level, I'll leave you the link down below to the Australian Tax Office website. They have a really nice table showing all the income brackets and tax payable, so check it out. Things you should know about working in Australia. As I said in one of my other videos, when you're working here, you have to be very, very mindful. If you make a comment about someone's appearance or you treat them differently based on their gender, ethnicity or religion or background in general, you can actually get fired. Australian workplaces are pretty big on compliance and workplace laws such as anti-discrimination and equal employment opportunity. These laws mean that everyone has the right to equal access to employment opportunities regardless of their gender, background or ethnicity and everyone has the right to feel safe in the workplace, both physically and psychologically. And this is why for psychological safety, most Australian employers offer free access to counseling services to their employees and their families. And another thing that you should know about working in Australia is that when you get a job, you usually have a three to six month probation period. And this means that if your employer considers that you didn't perform well in the job or you are not really suitable for that role, they may be able to terminate your contract. And speaking of performance, it's very common practice in Australia to have performance reviews. And these are usually chats or discussions that you have with your boss throughout the year to discuss your performance at work, your development goals and how everything is going. If you are thinking of quitting your job, that is ending your contract, you usually need to give your employer enough notice. You need to let them know between two weeks or four weeks in advance that you're going to move on to another job, but always read your contract. Many people also ask me, do I need a degree to work in Australia? And my answer is not necessarily. Whether you need a degree or not will depend on your industry and the job that you're interested in. So for example, the qualification requirements to work as a chef will be very different to those of an accountant. In some jobs, having many years of experience is more valued than a bachelor degree. So for this, I suggest doing a bit of research on your industry, checking the Job Outlook website. And of course, you should also check sick.com.au, different job ads to see what are the different requirements. Another question that I always get asked is, do I need the IELTS to get a job? And my answer is usually not. I know that if you're an international student and you're applying for a graduate job or a big consulting firm, you might need to submit your IELTS test, but this is not always the case. Based on my experience, you don't really need the IELTS at all. 
Another question that I get asked is, is it hard to find a job in Australia? And I'll be honest, yeah, it's not easy, but it's not only for migrants, but also for Australians in general. I have friends who are Australians and they still have to submit lots, lots of job applications and apply for many, many jobs. I think the secret to getting a job here is to spend a lot of time tailoring your job application, working on your resume, your cover letter, gaining experience and skills. If you don't have enough experience, go and volunteer, do internships, prepare for the interview. This is the best, best way to really get a job. So as long as you submit a good job application and you prepare well for the interview, you'll be fine. And if you want to know a bit more about the job application process and other essential things that you should know, check out this video. And if you need more help with writing your resume or your cover letter, check out these videos here. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really, really helps to support the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.